Are we ready to get started? I don't have a clock in front of me. <laughs> well, welcome everybody. Uh, it's 11 o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started. This is being recorded so that you can watch it in the future. Um, and this is a repeat of our presentation that we uh, ran during the MESAC conference. I know that there was competing you know, sessions going on, but a lot of people wanted to have our presentation again. So we're here to do it again. And so we're going to start off with this idea about how do you bring cybersecurity awareness to the public? How do you actually make your residents in your city more secure? And so we have some ideas on that. And uh, Theo is going to join me today and, and talk about our partnership with them and how we're rolling this out for the residents of the city of Livermore. I wanted to start off with something that is iconic that I think everybody recognizes. When you see this picture, you see Smokey the Bear, right? I don't have to ask you, what is his catchphrase? Like, only you can prevent forest fires, right? We all know that. This is an example of an extremely good, well thought out, well executed, and well adopted awareness program. It's on fire prevention awareness, so it's not on necessarily cybersecurity, but it's one that we should take a lesson from, right? This is something that's iconic. Everybody knows what it is. Everybody knows to watch out about forest fires. And it's an excellent program. And even some of his pals that go around with uh, Smokey the Bear, uh, I always like to ask this question is like, do you know who this is? And some people are like, well, I don't know who that really is. Um, but most people know it's Woodsy the Owl and his saying is give a hoot don't pollute right so this is about you know not polluting the environment you know uh, taking your trash out with you when you leave it's that kind of idea right so these are great mascots for you know uh, awareness programs that we have the one of the problems that we have is do you know who this is <laughs> right this is uh dewey the cybersecurity turtle and he came out in the early 2000s and uh, he was such a great hit, everybody remembers him, right? No, not really. Uh, it was a poorly executed um, you know, mascot for cybersecurity. Uh, I think one of the problems with it is the idea that they picked a turtle. I get that it's like, oh, he's got his shell on and he's protected, totally understand that. But the other bad part about it is most of the time people think of turtles, they think of slow, and most of the time they think about putting security on their machines, they think of it slowing it down, right? So I don't know that that was a message that we necessarily wanted to send. Also, I don't think it was really pushed out there, right? You know, it, it wasn't in, in the same level of marketing that you got with Smokey the Bear. And so that kind of starts off our session today to kind of say, okay, what, what is this initiative that we have with CyberSafe Livermore? And what did we try, what are we doing with it? Um, and part of that is making sure the public understands why cybersecurity is important. I mean, us as professionals, we all understand why it's important. You know, a number of cities have gone through uh, cyber incidents recently. So we understand that it's important. How do we get that to our residents? How do we help make them cyber safe, right? And um, it, it, yes, we have Cybersecurity Awareness Month and that is something that we should leverage and pivot off of. But in addition to that, we, we have to continue it beyond, right? This is December now that we're uh, doing this presentation. So it's at, well after October. The bad guys don't take off in November and say, oh, we're going to go on vacation because it's not Cybersecurity Awareness Month anymore, right? They're still actively attacking. It's a 24-hour, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So uh, one month is not enough necessary. It's great to have a month to say, hey, let's extra focus on it, but we need to focus on it all year round. There's a plenty of scams going on right now around holiday shopping, gift cards. Uh, there's a lot of scams now around, you know, uh, uh, applying for fake jobs just to get your personally identifiable information, right? Uh, because they know that right now is the holiday season, a lot of people are shopping, and they also know there's a lot of people looking for jobs. And so they're exploiting that. We have to help out with that. So we have some outreach that we have at the city and we're gonna kick it into full swing in uh, 2022. And so we wanna kind of give you our ideas of what we're doing and hopefully you run with it. 
and run past us, we hope, right? You know, let's work together to see how we can actually make the world cyber safe. Uh, part of that is, and what uh, Neil, Theo will talk about a little bit later, is about the mobile app uh, that uh, we brought to our residents. And, um, and that's our partnership with um, Right Hand Cybersecurity. Also, we have a website. We obviously put some resources on there, and we'll talk a little bit about that. I mean, we don't have to sell the idea that cybersecurity is important, right? Um, you know, the president's talking about it regularly. He just said that he wants to hire, you know, there's 600,000 empty uh, cybersecurity jobs. He wants to get them filled. Um, so we understand that cybersecurity is important. And we also have to understand that security breaches on the individual level and on small businesses are disproportionate. And what do I mean by that? When I say it's disproportionate, if you're a larger organization, you probably already have some type of cybersecurity staff, or you may have IT staff in an IT department or division that are able to help you recover or uh, prevent a, a cyber incident. Most small businesses don't have that. They relied upon outsourced IT folks or the person who is the office manager slash the person who sets up, you know, you know, network things, but you know, most of the time has to call for anything complex outside of it. What do you think their ability is to recover from a cyber incident? And most of those small businesses also don't know that they should probably have cyber insurance. So if they don't have cyber insurance uh, and they get hit with something, what are they going to do, right? So uh, that's what I mean by uh, disproportionate. I think there's also disproportional uh, impacts uh, on, uh, on individuals too, because again, they don't necessarily have that same expertise. But there's some interesting statistics out there, you know, 30% uh, of businesses, that's a third almost, uh, have been hit with some type of uh, official breach, uh, you know, that was recognizable. We're not talking about somebody that's probably in their network hiding there and then they, they don't know. 25% uh, of those had to file for bankruptcy and 10% went out of business. So if you think about it from a city's perspective, that's also a potential for lost revenue, for tax revenue, right? So businesses are out of business, there's no more sales tax, there's no more, uh, there's loss of jobs. Uh, there, there's an impact on there. So we have as a city, uh, from an economic development point of view, have a vested interest in kind of helping the small businesses in the ways that we can, uh, getting them the right information and the help that they need to kind of, um, uh, protect themselves. And cybercrime is not going away. It's the, one of the biggest economies in the world, like $6 trillion, I think is what one estimate said for it. So we've got a lot going on. We also have to talk about inclusion. I mean, that's something that we talk about, equity and inclusion. Well, what are we doing for uh, individuals who may not have uh, the same level of education on cybersecurity issues or uh, are just not as technically savvy uh, what are we doing to kind of help bridge the gap there? How can we help them? And this is an area like in our organization, this is something that our library focuses in on, right? We have the library there so that uh, anybody in the, uh, whether they can afford high-speed internet or not, can come into the library and access high-speed internet, right? So that's a part of us having, you know, that digital equity and inclusion. But if we want them to be cyber citizens in the future, we also need them to be cyber safe, right? So they can't just, you know, a friend of mine put it this way, and I have to say this is probably the best way to put it. It's like giving somebody a fire hose and turning it on without giving them any training, right? And if you've ever worked with a fire hose, there's a lot of pressure on that. If you don't handle it correctly, a lot of people are going to get hurt, right? So it's the same type of thing. We're going to give you high-speed internet access to the internet. Great. Um, by the way, we're not going to give you any help or guidance or anything about how to secure yourself. You're just, it's the wild west, you're on your own. That's not fair, right? So how can we help them understand how to make themselves secure? Uh, and, and the libraries where we're partnering in, uh, on our side in our city there with them. So how can we kind of help that? Also, this is where we want to reach out to the local, uh, you know, possible school K through 12, local community college, local college, whatever is in your city. Um, you know, maybe in the uh, Chamber of Commerce and stuff like that. These are areas that are right for us helping them out, right? We have the audience there. We just need to go and help them with it. Um, so what are our goals when we came up with uh, Cyber Safe Livermore? Our goals were to obviously increase uh, public safety, cybercrime prevention, 
uh, we're partnering with the police department with that, right? So how can we have the resources on where they, where is the best place to report certain, you know, crimes? You know, not all local police departments are capable of dealing with all of these different cyber crimes. And if you report it to them, they're going to probably just report it up. So um, you can report it to your local uh, PD, not telling, not saying you shouldn't, but I'm also saying that when you do, uh, do they have the right resources to get it to the right places, right? Um, and um, so we're looking at this as a holistic thing. It's not just the cybersecurity division here in the city that's responsible for it, but we're, we have partners within the city. So we have the police department, we have economic development, uh, and we have the library. Those are our main partners that we have because they all have interest groups that want to have more cybersecurity. And that's what we're kind of helping them with and, and partnering with them. Um, our, uh, for this year's uh, cybersecurity awareness, uh, month in October, we had a proclamation and, you know, officially named it Cybersecurity Awareness for the city of Livermore. And during the presentation, one of the things that our mayor said, Barb Warner said, and I wanted to reiterate what he had said in is, he said that this is an important part of the core mission of the city government, which is to keep citizens safe. I mean, I don't know that I could have said it better or more succinctly, but that's kind of what this whole process is about. How do we help our citizens. We, we, we have public safety. We have a fire department. We have a police department. We work on their safety, but what about their cyber safety? How can we pre help pre them prevent cyber crime or help prevent them from being victims of cyber crime? Uh, and in some small ways, we can help them at that and we want to do it. Uh, obviously, you know, cybersecurity awareness month is a big thing. And if you're a local government, you want to get into this and start doing that. I, the first place to start is the nice National Cybersecurity Alliance. They really work on uh, bringing uh, cybersecurity awareness and giving you some tools that you can then use, uh, social media posts. And so you don't have to spend a lot of time on it. I'm in a cybersecurity division that is one person uh, currently. And um, so I don't have a lot of time to make art and graphics and you know things for posting on the internet. That's what the National Cybersecurity Alliance has for you. So leverage that. Uh, in addition to that, you can join to be a partner. And when you join to be a partner, you'll be listed on their website. So you get national recognition for that. Uh, and that's not necessarily why we're doing it, but this also uh, lets the public know that you're concerned about their cyber safety as well. And you can see that there was a number of different cities that are listed on there. Um, there's a lot of cities in the, United States and in the state of California, I'd like to see this list really long with cities, right? I think that that's the goal that we all want to have. Um, so before, it's usually around August that it comes available that you can sign up for that year's uh, National Cybersecurity Awareness Month in October. Uh, so you go to National Cybersecurity Alliance and sign up for it. So just put a tickler in your thing in August and in September to remember to sign up for it. Um, and then get signed up for it and get listed on the site and then download the resources they have and then join that campaign. Help push that information that they have out to your public. Uh, so we did it this way. Uh, our police department, library, and city hall all have three different social media accounts. Uh, so what we did is we planned out how we wanted to uh, post those uh, different posts that they had recommended. Uh, in addition to advertising our cybersecurity awareness app that we have, so we put all that to kind of together and then made posts throughout the uh, month. We didn't want to have one social media post do all of them. So we kind of broke it out into individual ones. Uh, we, we thought that that would work out a lot better. Um, sometimes people feel like you're spamming them if you post too many things about the same topic, you know, even though it is Cybersecurity Awareness Month, but uh, you can do that. Like I said, as a part of our initiative, we partnered with our internal uh, departments and divisions within the city, police department, uh, library, and economic uh, development, all of us working kind of together to kind of work into these different areas. You know, and then we're gonna partner with, outside of that, uh, getting into local businesses, chamber of commerces, um, working with uh, you know, federal agencies. Uh, in the city of Livermore, we have Lawrence Livermore Lab and Sandia Lab. So partnering with them is our next step. Like, how can we partner with them? What resources can we offer them? What can they offer us? What can we do together to kind of make uh, the Livermore area more cyber safe? Uh, 
We're looking at nonprofits as well, um, you know, for individuals, especially those that are working on uh, helping uh, individuals transition, um, uh, for, you know, into jobs and into permanent housing. Uh, how can we help them also to be cyber safe as well? Uh, it's one thing to say, hey, we're going to give you a phone to kind of help you out so you can work on a resume or apply for a job, but we're not going to give you any safety with that, right? So how do we kind of help them with that as well? And then we have local co community college uh, working with them uh, in a couple different ways in different areas, and we're trying to uh, broaden that uh, here in the future. And then we have other school districts and our park district, which is separate from the city, working with them to kind of roll that same message out to the public. Um, and so part of it, obviously, is a number of social media posts. We also did during the month of October um, a cybersecurity awareness seminar online so the public could, you know, participate um, and ask questions. We also have our website that we launched that has additional resources. Uh, and we'll talk about the mobile app and incentives that we had to kind of uh, as an idea. So during the month of October, we obviously on our website, we focused on the fact that it's Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Um, and then afterwards, obviously, we, we kind of removed the aspect of Cybersecurity Awareness Month on it, but um, we maintained all the information and we continue to add to the information on a regular basis. So uh, we have a number of articles listed on our site. You can see the, the big squares there at the bottom of the page. You click on those and it takes you to uh, an article on it. Uh, at the bottom of the page, we also have the ability where you can click on a, a link and it opens up. If you're a small business, here's all the resources that you can access. Um, if you're another local government and you want a list of the access, I have this all in Excel sheet. I can send it to you. You can use it for your website. Um, the federal government has a lot of really good websites. State of California has some good websites. Um, I just gathered them all together and put them into one big, huge Excel sheet. I think we have, there's over 100 resources there. So, um, uh, whether they're nonprofit organizations or government organizations, tr trusted uh, sources of information on cybersecurity. So we have that already all compiled. It's all available on our website for our residents. You know, if they're a fam if they want to look at cybersecurity for family, they can just click on that. We also have, like I said, the articles. Uh, a lot of the articles, uh, some of this stuff didn't invent ourselves. Uh, this came from the Cybersecurity Awareness uh, uh, Alliance. Right, they, they had the stuff for us. We just copied and pasted basically for uh, much of this. Uh, there are some things that we created, but most of it we just grabbed from other sources that we were able to grab from. Uh, that gets the content up there, that gets the information out to the residents. And that's kind of what we were focusing in on. And uh, the other thing that we did, and if you look on our website, you can click to sign up for an app. And I'm gonna turn it over to Theo because we basically, I, uh, to introduce Theo, <laughs> what I did to him, he called me up and said, hey, you know, we have this new cybersecurity awareness program. And I said, hey, I like it. I like the, what you got here. And I saw potential in it. And I said, hey, I want to ask you something that's crazy. And it, it pays sometimes to ask the crazy questions. I said, hey, you know, I'm passionate about making sure we make the world cyber safe. And my job is to make Livermore cyber safe. So I'm like, but I, I'm, the thing that I struggle with is internally great within the city, we have it, but how do I get it to the residents? And I told him, I said, I love your mobile app. I like the way it works. I like the gamification that you added to it. How can I get that to my residents? And so I told him, I said, hey, this is a great opportunity uh, for us to partner together. And, um, and my big request is, I want you to give it to me for free for my residents. And I said, well, you know, he's either going to tell me I'm crazy or, or we're going to have a really cool thing. And I think we got the really cool thing. So I'm going to turn it over to Theo and let him tell you about it. Thanks, Donald. I appreciate it. I, I, I always joke with Donald, but when we first met, it was on a call, an introductory call where I was introducing myself and my, my business right hand cybersecurity. So it was essentially a sales call. And by the end of the call, uh, Donald had actually sold me on why we were going to give him our solutions for free for all of his residents of Livermore. So I, I always give him a, a tough time for that, but in a, in a great way, it's turned into a great friendship and, and, and also business collaboration as well. Um, so really quick, I'll just, I'll, I'll introduce myself. Uh, I'm Theo Nasser. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Right Hand Cybersecurity. At Right Hand, we provide organizations with a gamified and interactive 
cybersecurity, cybersecurity awareness platform. Uh, and that is with the intent of helping organizations improve their cyber culture and, their, and improve employee cyber behavior. Now, our philosophy around security awareness is, is different from what you might have experienced in the past. We actually don't provide any of these long e-learning videos, which I know is very common in our industry. Instead, what we do at right hand is we aim to build the most employee or the most user-friendly experience. We've built a mobile app, we've built a web app, and everything is very interactive and gamified. And so as I was sharing this with Donald, uh, the light bulb immediately went off for him saying, well, if it's going to be user friendly and it's going to be available on a mobile app or, or a web browser application, um, why not extend this to people beyond just an organizational business? Why not extend this to all of the residents? And that's how this conversation started. And that's what uh, has led us here today. I attended MESAC several months ago. Uh, in Palm Springs, and I partnered with Donald on a presentation there, and uh, we're, we're, we're happy to, to share this presentation with you all again here today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through a little bit more about the application, a little bit more about the company, and a little bit more about the value that we can provide. And the reason we're doing this is to extend this opportunity to all of you as well. Um, Donald, uh, it, is, it is not an exclusive, an exclusive partnership where we're only providing this uh, available and for free to Donald's residents. This is something that we're opening up. If there's any way we can help support MESAC and any of the municipalities around California, I'm from San Mateo myself, uh, born and raised. I attended Santa Clara University in the South Bay as well. So if there's any way we can give back and support the, the municipalities and the residents um, around the state, we're more than happy to do so. So... What, what I'd like to do here on this slide, I, I just want to provide a quick overview of what it is that we're offering to the Livermore residents. Um, what it is, it's a gamified mobile app. It's also a web browser application, so your, your residents can easily access it just from their browser URL, where we incorporate gamification to make cybersecurity learning fun. The best analogy I can provide you all so you can kind of wrap your heads around exactly what we're doing here is comparing our app to Duolingo. So I, I, I hope this is an analogy that uh, is, is relevant here and, and that at least some people uh, uh, know what I'm talking about. Duolingo is the, markets, the market leader for language learning, mobile on the go language learning. It's the modern Rosetta Stone. And it allows you to learn about Chinese, Japanese, German, Spanish, any language uh, in a very interactive and gamified way. So similar to Duolingo, what, what the right-hand cybersecurity app, what we also do, and the app, just so you know, is called Ally, A-L-L-Y. It, it aims to help you build cyber allies across your residents, across your user base. It incorporates leaderboards, it incorporates badges, competitions to make training fun and to make it interactive and to make it less burdensome. We don't want it to feel so much like a check of the box exercise or a nuisance, a distraction from your core job or responsibilities or duties. We want to make it fun. Um, and so the way that we do training is we provide real world security scenarios. We provide people with short bite-sized 30 second security scenarios. Uh, and we essentially ask them to make a quick security decision, right? visit this web page or visit that web page. And one of them are going to be legitimate and one of them are going to be malicious. And a user has to go through the process of selecting which one is safe and which one is not based on uh, several factors that we train users uh, and we train their eyes and we train their minds on what they need to identify to, to recognize a malicious web page. Um, so we make the training very hands-on. Uh, next slide, please, Donald. So where did this whole idea come from? Well, uh, it, it really just came from the market. I, I, always, I always say it right hand, as a security awareness company, we really have two groups of, of people that we cater to. We really have two groups of customers. We've got the InfoSec community, which is all of you here joining us on this call today. And then we've got the non-InfoSec community, which are all of our res or I shouldn't say all, most of our residents. Uh, and then probably, what, 99% of our companies, those are the non-InfoSec communities. 
So when you talk to the InfoSec communities and you ask them about what does security awareness look like today, what they'll tell you is that people typically resist it. They see security awareness as a, a nuisance, as a job blocker, as a distractor. This is preventing me from getting my core job responsibilities done. Um, InfoSec people will tell you that the training isn't sticking. Like people are, are being trained on an annual, you know, once a year exercise. And then right after, um, they're, they're still making mistakes, whether it's, you know, failing a phishing simulation or, or exhibiting some type of risky behavior. So it, it's not actually leading to any type of behavior change. And then when you talk to the people that receive security awareness today in its current form, again, those long hour long e-learning videos or, or annual exercises, people will tell you that it's too long, it's hard to retain the information and the content isn't engaging. So this is what gave us this idea to build a gamified and interactive mobile app and also a web browser with 30 second games, real world scenarios to help condition a user's eyes and, and condition a user's mind to be more cyber safe and to be more cyber aware. And I'll, I'll tell you this too, before starting Right Hand, I used to work for FireEye. And when I was with FireEye, I was helping them build security operations centers around the world. And so we built a security operations center in Singapore and Tokyo, Munich, Germany, Australia. And so I spent time living in each of these countries building a security operations center. And so I was working very closely with our FireEye incident response team, the team that would respond to some of the world's largest data breaches. And when FireEye would receive those calls and we'd go in, we'd do the investigation and triage of the security incident, more often than not, we found that the root cause of those breaches all started with humans. All right, so where did the idea come from? Well, it, it came from this plague that we have across our industry where so many incidents are being caused by human error. And my belief that the current approaches and the, the current tools uh, that are available in the market just aren't aren't cutting it. We, we, we need to innovate. We need to modernize these approaches. And that's why we started right hand. Let's go to the uh, next slide. Thank you, Donald. Perfect. So, so how does this work? If we want to deploy this mobile app to your residents, uh, what does it look like? It, it's a very simple three-step process. Um, the first step, what we would do, uh, of course, once we had a conversation and you told me exactly what you were trying to achieve, when you wanted to achieve it, um, we would essentially, as a step one, we would need to collect the email addresses of your residents. And one easy way to do that would be similar to what Donald did is on his uh, City of Livermore page, he has a sign up. And in that sign up page, it allows users to say, I want to be trained on cyber awareness. It's completely free. Uh, it's fun and it, it's available to them through the city. So once we get those email addresses, we're able to just push them a QR code. It, it doesn't get much easier than that. They scan the QR code. It takes them immediately to the app store if they're on an iPhone or an iOS device. And, and it'll also take them to the Play Store if they're on an Android. And they can quickly download the app. Again, it's called Ally by Right Hand um, Cybersecurity. And then once they download the app, they'll immediately get access using their email address to log in. And as they log in, your users and your residents can start learning and they can start learning across a variety of different topics, social engineering, phishing, uh, public Wi-Fi, social media, the list goes on and on and on. I think we have a slide in here, Donald, if you go to the next one. Um, coming up here, in a, there it is, the training topics that we have available. Uh, for all of your users and, and all of these part of our onboarding with the city is we can work with you con to configure what training topics are relevant for your users, right? So we can identify what makes sense and what's relevant for, for them. We've got content on cybersecurity. You can see all the list of topics here on the left. And we've even built content around cyber safety for families. We realize if we're doing this for residents, that means we're, we're likely going to be doing this for some children, for some students, uh, maybe for some an older generation, people who, who aren't necessarily too computer or tech savvy. And we just need to, to, to teach general cyber safety. So we've built a lot of content that caters to, to all these different topics. We've got even more content that's listed here than on this slide. We've got a ton of governance, risk, and compliance content as well. A lot of our customers 
um, not necessarily residents or, or municipalities, but you know, we work with um, large banks in the US. Some of our customers include uh, federal branches of government in the United States. We've got uh, some municipalities are actually paying customers that use our products internally for their city, for their organization. Um, we've got high tech enterprises as well. And so we've got an entire training module and, and set of topics all around governance, risk and compliance as well. Uh, so we've got a lot of content, hundreds and hundreds of these 30, 60 second scenarios that I've described to you available that you can custom configure to make it most relevant for your municipality. And then here, one of the things that we've talked about with Donald is around doing resident reinforcement and rewards. How can you actually create something for your resident community that they genuinely want to participate in for their betterment around cyber safety? Well, you can cater to everyone's natural, um, natural desire for incentive. And that includes money, gift cards. So one of the things that we've talked about doing now with the city of Livermore, and I think this is more of our plan now um, for upcoming initiatives in, in, in the future, is to implement rewards. You can identify local businesses in your municipality and say, hey, maybe we can go find a local restaurant or a local coffee shop, uh, help feed the economy that you have locally and, and say, hey, if you are a top performer in our ally mobile app cyber safety training, you'll receive a $25 gift card or a, a, a 15 or a $50 gift card, just a, a small prize that helps create a, a contagious atmosphere around cyber safety. Uh, and I had alluded to this earlier about it being the Duolingo uh, this was a quote from a customer, one of our enterprise clients who's very familiar with the, the app. Uh, they essentially said that this is like the Duolingo for cyber awareness. Uh, and here are just a couple of screenshots of, of what the app looks like. So you can see that there's a login page. We've got a customized chat bot that allows uh, you, this, the city of Livermore or Donald to speak with the residents. We allow you to fully customize it. So it actually looks like it's, uh, it, I don't know if you remember seeing on one of Donald's previous slides, he actually built an emblem, a logo for the, the city of Livermore security division. I think Donald's gonna pull it up here. Um, yeah, that emblem, that logo right there, we're able to implement that into our application. So it looks like all of the residents are being trained by the city of Livermore. It's not, they're not being trained by a third party or some mysterious voice or mysterious figure in a video. It's actually looks like it's coming from the city. So it's very white labeled. Um, that's really our approach here is we want to provide a very personalized and direct experience for security awareness and cyber safety. And we want to extend it to as many people as we possibly can. So if you're interested to learn more, that, that was our presentation for today. This was mainly just to be a quick teaser and, and overview of what we're doing. I, since I, I worked with Donald and we gave this presentation a couple months ago in Palm Springs at the MESAC conference, uh, I've received a lot of, of just contacts and emails for, from people who are in that presentation and were interested in maybe uh, doing this for their residents or doing this across their organization. So um, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to talk with you about how we can help. Again, we're here to help for free for your residents uh, if that's an initiative that you think would be beneficial and, and valuable. I know um, October Cyber Awareness Month is a long ways away. So whether you wanted to wait and do it then, if you wanted to do it beforehand, we're here to support you. Um, through that process. Thanks, Theo. Um, if you guys have any questions watching this live, please uh, go ahead and uh, type in, you know, your questions. Um, I think Lisa will help us with that, but you just let us know if you have any questions. And I, you know, my last thing that I would say, unless if there's not any questions, why we, why you guys figure out what your questions are is, as local governments, there's new and innovative things that we're doing, right? Around technology, we're looking at bringing, you know, some cities are looking at bringing Wi-Fi to the residents, you know, and, and those types of things. Uh, cybersecurity should come along with any of that, right? We know that anytime that we look at any 
of the different, uh, you know, initiatives that we have on technology, that cybersecurity should be a hand in hand, a part of that. And it, this doesn't have to be difficult. Like I said, I'm a division of one person and I've got a lot of other stuff I got to do here in the city, but I was able to execute this this year. And I think that every city in the state of California should do it. And that's my challenge to everybody. There is uh, MS ISAC has, not MESAC, MS ISAC has a annual cybersecurity awareness award for local governments for their website and what they have on it. Um, I'm throwing the gauntlet down to all the cities out there. Hey, let's compete for it. Let's see who has the best one, right? Um, I think that that's a great competition. Let's all join in it. Let's all of us try to make the world cyber safe and let's see what we can come up with. So that's my challenge to all the other local governments that are out there um, and uh, uh, see what happens. Uh, so Caesar has a question. What was the general response from the public? Uh, we had... We didn't fully implement this last year, so we're still in the process of implementing. We did get quite a few hits on our social media posts. Um, we're rolling this out, um, looking to roll more information out at the library. We had some static signs that were there. Um, so we're kind of like looking at what, you know, what can we recommend going forward uh, with the library so that because we have a lot of people that come into the library and we want them to be able to like click a QR code and be taken to the website so I can sign up for the app. So that's what we're working on now. Um, we've had a, a number of people sign up for the app and start using it. And uh, it has the ability to kind of uh, remind them on a regular basis. I don't want to say it's nagging them, uh, but it tells them, it says, hey, you know. Nudging. Nudging, there you go. Um, it just lets them know, hey, that there's, there's activities that they can do, right? And it kind of pushes them up, so. And I, I could even comment too on, on that question, Caesar, around some of our clients that use our application for, for their business. We always, we run a survey and in that survey, we will typically ask our clients to share it with their employees. And we ask them directly, um, do you prefer this method of learning for cybersecurity awareness or do you prefer what you were doing before, which is those uh, annual security awareness exercises? And I'm happy to share that we've got a 90% approval rating uh, around Ally, our method of security awareness training, than what's currently existing. So users that use Ally, they love it. Uh, the, the feedback is very, very positive. Our, our um, satisfaction and NPS scores are very high for this solution. I also have to say, um, internally within the city during the Cybersecurity Awareness Month, we also did a cybersecurity scavenger hunt. And I know that the uh, SANS organization has one. We just made our own. Uh, I think the one, uh, the other ones that are online, you have to pay for. Uh, I just basically found a bunch of cybersecurity cool videos that were on YouTube, gave them the links to where all the videos were, and I had questionnaires for them. They had to go answer all the questions. And when they answered the questions all right, and they submitted it online, and it would send me an email and tell me that they answered them all right. And uh, that was just a form in Teams. You know, I just made a form in Teams. Here's a questionnaire. Answer, you know, what it was. And for all the winners, each week I would go out and say, "Hey, here's the winners for this week," and and then I would say also they come by my office to get a prize. So uh, so obviously we've talked a lot about phishing lately because that's one of the ways everybody sends stuff. So I their prizes were either a Swedish fish, goldfish, rainbow goldfish, or sugar free uh, gummy fish. So it's all fishing related, um, but they loved it. I mean, people started competing about it. And then when I ran out of certain treats, then people were kind of bummed about it. So I have to make sure next year I have enough treats uh, for that. But uh, it's, it's amazing what a 50 cent bag of goldfish will really <laughs> uh, get people in a, com a competitive uh, a mode. So uh, that was really interesting. Uh, we have another question It says, if... Uh, if we were to partner with this app, are statistics available regarding citizen registrations usage for the app? For example, are in citizens installing and using it? I'll let uh, Theo answer that one. The answer is yes. So in regards to the analytics and dashboard, 
we provide you, in addition to everything that your users have access to, you'll get access to an admin console. And in the admin console, you'll be able to see all of the analytics and reports and, and information around the performance of your residents. We tell you everything is granular to how many people downloaded and started using the app. Um, we will tell you what topics your users are performing strongest in and what topics are your users struggling a little bit with. Maybe they're performing really strong in the password hygiene uh, training scenarios, but they're performing and, and struggling a bit more on the spear phishing related content. And so we give you all that type of visibility. Um, th this is an enterprise application at the end of the day, guys. So, so it's, you know, th this is an enterprise application that we charge for when we're selling it to businesses. Um, we haven't created anything different. We're basically providing this enterprise ready application that is being used for ISO 27001 compliance. Um, we use this, uh, customers use this for SOC 2. Uh, our customers are using this for privacy regulations that they need to comply with, whether it's CCPA or GDPR in Europe. And we've got a lot of clients in Asia that have to comply with PDPA in Singapore. Um, so it's an enterprise ready app where you're able to do all those types of things. Another question came in around residence data get shared or sold to outside parties. No, we don't do that. We, we don't sell residence data, customer data, anything like that. We're a small startup um, that, that does not do anything like that. No. Well, I, I wanted to mention that too, because uh, um, I, I think that's a good point to make sure that everybody understands that um, what I've asked from Right Hand Cybersecurity was to take an enterprise app that they use normally for internal and to pivot, you know, to kind of also make a version of it for free for residents, right? And, um, and I think that was one of the good things about Theo and I, we both have the same kind of vision, you know, how do we make the world cyber safe, you know, and uh, he was 100% on board once I said, hey, this is like my idea. And, and I, <laughs> I did think he was going to tell me, uh, you're crazy. <laughs> um, but hey, that's the benefit of, of collaboration, right? We both can work together. And because this is not, they're not making money off of doing this. this that's not their model, right? You know, a lot of organizations provide free services and the model is you're the you're 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 what's being sold to marketers right um that's not their model their model is to sell to large corporations and to us as cities for internal cybersecurity awareness training uh that's where they're making their money so they're not selling our data uh, uh they're not selling resident data in, in order to make their money their business model is to make it by selling it to organizations so um, I think that that works really well because I agree. I think Tom's the one to ask the question and that's, uh, yeah, uh, we don't want to, we would never want to uh, endorse selling residents information. That would not be good. And, and I mean, the, the, obviously, uh, the obvious other factor here too is I think it's great branding for our company as well, right? If, if we're able to provide this to, to residents, yeah, it's, it's a free app that you're able to send to your residents. But at the end of the day, uh, if we're getting our brand and our logo in front of uh, in front of people and, and people are enjoying the application, it's not harmful for the brand. It's beneficial for the brand. So I, I do think there's a value there, especially for a, a smaller startup like us that's um, doing something that's very mission oriented. And, and I think we'll have a really big and positive impact in the community. I, to, I, nobody asked this question, like, what are some of the other areas that we're looking at pushing this out to? Uh, Traditionally, the city hasn't had a really big push on uh, putting information in utility bills, uh, but we are putting it in their utility bills uh, to remind them that there's cyber information available on our website with the link to it. So as a part of that process, there's a lot of different channels within the city that they're interacting with the residents. And obviously with utility billing uh, earlier last year, there was a lot of fraud related to that or, or some kind of scam going on related to that, people pretending to be you know, the water company and stuff like that. So um, our water resources started wanting to put that type of information in there. And I said, hey, great, let's put that information in there, but let's also put some cyber information in there, right, as well. Um, so they're gonna put links to our uh, website that you saw earlier. Um, so that's another way that we're getting into uh, getting out to the residents. So there's more ways that you can get into this. Um, and it's really just about collaborating within the city and then with your 
constituents, other organizations within your cities. In, in, in our city, we have the federal government, so we can you know, partner somewhat with them. Uh, but then we also have um, like you know, faith-based organizations, uh, ones dealing with um, uh, residents trying to help them you know, transition them to permanent housing and stuff like that. There's a lot of different groups out there that we can work with and say, hey, we have this information, just pass it on, right? Um, and uh, if we provide them with the information to pass on, I haven't seen anybody say, no, we don't wanna pass it on. Um, you know, we have a community center with our uh, Livermore Area Recreation and Park District. Well, we can make signs for them and then have them post them over there. So there's a lot of different opportunities that we have to partner with all these organizations within and outside of our organization. So there's a lot to be done. And by the way, all of you that are on here, again, your cities, I recommend that you kind of do this. Let's do it. Let's do a challenge. I'll throw the gauntlet down and say by the next MESAC uh, conference, we'll see who, who's the winner and uh, we'll go from there. But on top of that, hey, if you guys have great ideas out there and what you're doing in your city, um, join the MESAC Cybersecurity Committee and, and give us your ideas and then let's take those ideas and help other cities do the same thing. Um, so that's kind of what we're working on uh, in the Cybersecurity Committee as well. So how, how can we help other uh, cities just, you know, click and go type of thing. Here's a list of all the stuff, you know, uh, now you can run with it. So all the resources you have and anything you can help out with that, we would love to uh, uh, partner with you on that as well. And I don't think we have any, no, no more questions. That's a good one. Well, if that's not, if that's it, this will be like one of the first times that you'll uh, be in a webinar and it ends early. <laughs> so, uh, I don't have anything else. Uh, you have any last words, Theo? No, uh, thank you guys for the opportunity and, and taking the time to learn a little bit more about Right Hand today. If you have any questions, this is my email address. Please feel free to uh, message me anytime. I'd be happy to answer any other questions you might have. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.